All right, so where I am at the moment in this process is deciding on the background texture and color that best goes with my type. And these are all things in balance, right? So we have our spot illustration in balance with the text we designed. And then we try to play with coloring that makes sense. Now I like this coloring on the white paper, but on the, the blue, I, I think it loses something, even though I like those textures. And I want to go more natural overall. I really just want to be inspired in general by this, this idea of letterpress. Let me open this up. So you can kind of see the texture of the paper and maybe even you see a little bit of the overlapping of, um, of the colors being the different inks layered on top of each other. And there's just kind of more mess. So I think I need a little bit more work for that. And it doesn't work just to bring in any old texture and just apply it to everything. So I'm going to bring in a large format print really just for the paper. So I'm bringing this in and I'm just going to use it for the paper texture and I'm going to use the compositing skills with a few new tricks to show you how you can get blank paper from this. Now again you can just scan your own paper but this would be a large scan but notice how it has that subtle texture in it. Not just in the colored parts, but in the white in particular. Right. So what I do is I rasterize this. So full size. Then I lasso around the areas I want to disappear because I just want the paper, I'm basically erasing this print. Hold down shift, lasso these. Then I'm going to feather that selection by quite a bit. So by 30 pixels, I just deselected it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again with that 30 pixel feather turned on to help soften it. And then I'm going to do what's called a content aware fill. So instead of filling with white, which we've done and gray, we've done and black, we've done by doing content aware, the computer is going to sample. It's like clone stamp. It's going to sample from all of the other pixels that are not selected. And it will try to match that in a way that feels consistent within the shapes that are selected. So it will replace, hopefully replace all of the, the color. So I just get back to a blank sheet of paper. So it's really thinking about the image like I'm printing it, right? So there we have it. And if I deselect, yeah, you can't tell where those cutouts were very much at all. There are little, little irregularities, but those don't necessarily need to be bad. And if I want to fix those irregularities, like here and here, what I can do is use not the clone stamp tool, but the patch tool. And that will sample that area and kind of blend it in with another area. As long as it doesn't soften out that texture, I'm happy. Yeah, good. So now I've got a, a nice base neutral area there. And I like that better than the blue. Okay, now I can move that down below my illustration. And you can see what effect that has. So what does the, the line work and the color holds look like? on that paper now, as opposed to on white, it looks like it's ink sitting on top right, of that texture. Now, because my digital illustration is so sharp, I can take my paper texture and I can actually run it through a sharpening filter, which I don't encourage on photographs, but when it's just textures, this can work pretty well. So you can use unsharp mask, like this, or you can use Smart Sharpen. It's just like Gaussian blurring, but in reverse. It tries to find edges and increase their contrast. The 
because I don't want this paper texture to be subtle. In a digital print, I can print it on textured paper, but this is going to give me the control of that look. Let's see, Let's see how this looks. So these are sharpening filters. There's so much that we can do. Filters take a while, especially because I'm now over two gigs. I need to kind of consolidate some of my type layers to make this more workable. But notice I'm still a far cry from a really, really strong texture. Something else I might try looking at is recycled paper. I'm going to try it as a texture fill, and then I can just try searching it as recycled paper. But I want these to be large, so under Tools, I'm going to make the size larger than, oh, let's do 8 megapixels. See if there's anything. So I get paper textures. They're not that neutral, but this one could be used just for the textures. I'm going to open that link. And All right, yeah, that looks good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. This kind of natural variation. So I'm going to open the image in a new tab, close this, zoom in fully. Excellent. So that will help. So I'm going to save that to the desktop. These are big files, so you want to make sure it actually saves. There it is. And then I can bring that on and layer it just to create a base paper. Right. So that, that texture, you can see, the smart texture helped bring it out using the filter, the smart sharpen rather. So now, you can see how my line work looks on that versus just on what I had. Let's keep moving it down. Now the color, especially the drop shadow, that makes a lot of sense on that. Turn off these. the time being. Yep. So that's where my base paper layer goes. Now on top of that, I'm going to put this gray paper. Rotate it. Stretch it out. Pull it down. Fill the space. And I'll still cut a white border out of this when I'm all done. All right, now I can try blending that in through an overlay. And now on that base paper, you'll see the two textures layered up so it feels more and more believable. That's a nice kind of neutral, neutral white. All right, I could also try soft light. And that might be even stronger. Yeah, that looks too digital. I don't think it's letting enough through, so let's see. Overlay, yeah. pin light, yeah, overlay is the one. 
good. Now, a clever trick is I can use this as my gray. So if I duplicate that and then just set it to normal, that's kind of my gray tone as I'm designing my, um, what do you call it? <laughs> my coloring for my lettering and like rethinking that. But I'm going to merge the layer behind. Now I can get rid of my gray fill, get rid of my black fill. And now I have white paper with an actual paper texture, and I have this kind of gray recycled paper with all its complexity. All right, now if I put these previous color choices on top of it, they just don't seem as, as tempting. So what if I overlay those, right? So now I just have that really, really slight blue into the white paper. So it just gives it a, a tint, it's like colored paper. That might be nice. Pin light makes the blue a little too strong, but it makes it feel like printmaking and kind of scattering it. Let's try a soft light. It makes it extremely subtle. But still there. I actually think I like that best. Now, in the interest of trying to consolidate some of the memory, see if I want to use this at all. Let's see, I can set it to um, color burn. So let the darker color come through. Let's just do darker color and then let's take the opacity way down. Now I'm going to consolidate all of those paper layers into one layer and that's just my base. It also shows me where my edge was for my border, which is helpful. And on top of that, I'll build my poster. So all on top of just my white background, I take all these layers and I merge them together. Command E. Okay, now it's about the lettering. And I'm gonna take all my lettering That's underneath my vector lettering and merge it together. Command E. And same thing with the, the ones above. Now, when you merge layers, multiple layers with different layer styles, the layer styles get automatically rasterized, right? So let's see what my three type layers are doing. The one on top is giving me that kind of white diffusion. The one underneath, all these effects are giving me kind of the bulk of the color. But no strokes on that. And then the one un underneath that is giving me all the outside version. So the outside version are maybe a little, a little fussy, right? So instead, let's just try a straight offset. And I'm not going to turn the diffusion on. So basically, I'm just right back to my, my straightforward vector. Now, I can duplicate that. 